um, uh, we've got the um, we've got the um, a maintenance cohort out in the sixty in the in the uh, voice viewer out, which are both based off of the current release. Um, there are a couple more waiting in the wings that are just struggling to get through QA. We'll have an update shortly, with, I hope, for each of them. Uh, we'll have uh, a rendering branch update, a, a, uh, an update for media handling that upgrades to the latest Chrome. Uh, and what else have we got in the pipeline here? Um, and then hopefully not too far away is the Animesh Project Viewer. Um, and we'll have uh, another update that's got other fixes for the 64-bit branch um, that just didn't quite make the cut getting in um, under the wire. So <clears throat> uh, lots of activity, uh, but um, not a lot that's already out. Um, this voice viewer, I'm hoping that we will be able to promote it next week. Um, and actually, I want to check on our third-party viewer meeting calendar. Uh, we Our next one after this one won't be until February the 16th. That is, it will be three weeks rather than just two, because two weeks from now I will be on an airplane when this meeting should be happening. And that wouldn't work real well. So, uh, but I think that's, I think that's the, um, that's the status of what's in the viewer development pipeline at the moment. And the floor is open for other topics. Yes, I did just see that email. I'll respond to it. I, there's, uh, it's it's sort of a peculiar thing. It happens on some Macs and not others, and I haven't been able to figure out why not. But I have a patch, so uh, I will, um, I will, I will send Tony that patch. Uh, it's just. Um, the, di the fix ends up being that uh, one of the libraries gets built with the usual convention of there's the real library and then there are a bunch of sim links that point to it for um, different for different numbers of levels in the version number and um, for some reason uh, it it doesn't find the one it's looking for um, and the solution is just to copy all of them and and then it works just fine uh, but oddly it it does seem to work for some people i i have no idea what the difference is yeah uh we like that change um i i don't think our viewer will let you set the LOD more than four, but if it's if it's true that it that it will, then we'll we'll make this it will in debug. Oh, oh well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll fix that too. Then that's a good idea. I I assume you're getting a lot of flack about it. I mean, I I don't know, but yeah. Well, we're. Uh, if it's if it's any comfort at all, and I don't suppose it is, um, we're very supportive. Uh, 
Uh, I have really um, appreciated the the excellent write up that a few of you have done in a couple of different places on why that's a big deal. Uh, so it's it's really good. So and we we are trying to get our our project to collect data about what various rendering features really cost uh, rolling again. And I expect that within a few weeks, we will have a lot of data to pour over and can start thinking about how to update the formulas to be more realistic. Um, Uh, that's an in interesting idea. I will suggest that to the people who display the yellow day, the message of the day. Uh, one of the things we've been trying to do is change the message of the day more frequently so that it's more like a message of the day and not just a message that hasn't changed in a long time. Especially now that we're displaying it during teleports. Uh, yes, um, I have queued up a task for somebody to update that documentation. It's just that they've been tied up in uh, in a high priority project. So we we will get that fixed. Oh, Penny, you're here. Um, we're going to want to get you involved in testing. Uh, what will I'm sure be your favorite, <laughs> your favorite change? We're adding uh, Jonathan Yap is working on camera presets um, so that you can change your default camera positions. Um, and we're going to include your recommended settings as one of the built-in presets. So we should have a test viewer to check that with in, um, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks probably. Um, so we'll we'll uh, we'll get you we'll get you an early version to test with. OMV. Yeah, I think the camera presets, it's going to be super convenient for me, actually, because I'm constantly going to meetings in Second Life, each of which have different visibility constraints. So I'll have presets for each of my meeting locations. It'll be cool. Um, uh, AIS docs. Okay. Um, we're actually doing some work on AIS and related things, so this is a good time to hear about problems with it. Um, can you... Uh, can you either send mail or create a JIRA that summarizes what you think the missing or flawed stuff is? And we'll get them fixed. That'd be great. Um, part of that project, um, it's not the first part. We're doing some other fixes first. But um, part of that project, which will go on for probably a few months at least, is... Uh, looking for opportunities to deprecate old UDP inventory operations in favor of uh, AIS. So, um, and once we've done that, eventually we will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get the patches out in our viewer, give you the usual long lead time, and then we'll, at some point, we will switch off support for them on the server side. 
Um, so, but you, you'll get more, much more specific, and and obnoxious warnings from me about that as it's as it's happening. Yes, it will definitely go up on a DD first, um, so that you can check things. A couple LLUDP methods that are being deprecated. I don't know what those would be. I don't know. Uh, you know, send me send me something with the specific sender, and I'll I'll look into it. Are there any updates on the uh, VRAM features? Uh, not yet, but that's fairly high on the list of rendering changes that we want to get to. Um, probably won't actually do that and for for a little while, but um, weeks rather than months. Uh, before yeah, we start, no problem. Start doing those tests. Um, right now we've got the we've got a branch with some rendering bug fixes in it that's been struggling mightily to get through QA and hasn't hasn't managed to do it, uh, but we're going to have, uh, I managed to get a developer back from Sansar to do rendering work, so we're going to be doing a lot more of it now, which is great news. So that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Um, so I'm very excited like... about it. Sorry? Uh, parcel wind lights. That's that's coming. It's it's in uh, progress. Is Ryder here? Are you out absolutely. there somewhere? We, we, yes. No, no, I've not seen him. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, par, uh, parcel wind lights. Par, parcel wind lights are chugging along. Um, I actually just this week su successfully got uh, um, individuals. Uh, so a, uh, a special sim host with uh, uh, which actually lets you uh, set part uh, set wind lights on indivi on specific parcels. Um, not quite ready for pl prime time yet, but but uh, soon. Lighting. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's coming. Um. Um, uh, yes, we are not yet. Oh, uh, height altitudes will be included, uh, uh, Chalice. But uh, um, but uh, they'll they'll probably be preset on the on the sim host. Yeah, we'll have some fixed ranges that you can use. So there won't be an arbitrary number of heights, but there will be a few. Um, that the specific on that remains to be seen a little bit, but uh, um, yes, we're do, we're going to do the ability to to send uh, a uh, an an environment setting to a user and let them be changed to that. Of course, that depends on the viewer supporting it, but. Uh, but it'll be under experience control. So yes, that'll be that'll be pretty cool. Um, uh, the 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 long pull on this schedule, the thing that has taken a while is that, um, and legitimately is that uh, rather than it being a you know sort of a bunch of loosely related settings in a region. Um, Wind light settings are now one of a few different types of settings objects, uh, and those are stored in the asset system, and you can be stored in your inventory, and can be exchanged, and have all the nice properties that um, that assets have. Uh, so uh, you'll will be able to, and and we had to change 
both the simulator and a and a viewer so that they don't expect random uh, values from somewhere in the simulator. They expect object IDs. Um, so all that will be will be coming. So that that infrastructure needed to be built up before we could start fiddling with things like whether or not they apply to parcels. Well, there's there's uh, it's what there's um, sky settings and water settings and and day cycles. So. Uh, that sounds like an interesting thing for us to look at, Kitty, the texture decoding. Um, very interesting. If you could send me specifics, I'd really appreciate hearing about it. We're one of our little uh, experimental viewers that we've been doing um, a, sort of as a low priority side project for a couple of months now is to is to rip the whole texture caching system out and redo it in a much simpler way. Um, my hope was that it would turn out to be faster. Uh, so far, it hasn't, but we, I'm not satisfied that we've that we've done it um, quite correctly. So um, that's that's an experiment we'll be continuing for a little while. Hopefully, we'll come up with with uh, a, a faster caching scheme than the current excessively complex one both for eventually both for objects and for textures but focused on textures now what up a door goes to fashion exempting the cache in antivirus uh Really? Hmm. Yeah. yeah but that's not something we can do programmatically, though. Shouldn't be. <laughs> um. HTTP fetch and older routers pulling the textures too slow. Um, there, there were problems when we first started using HTTP for textures with us sending too many texture requests and, and um, either confusing or crashing some very low-end home routers. Um, but I, I, uh, so far we can't, Pat, Penny, but um, that's something we can talk about. Um, is there a, an official message on how best to structure inventory? Uh, it's not the main message there is that it's not good to have too many items, and that by too many I mean more than a few thousand in any one folder, um, and where an item is either uh, an an asset or a link or a folder. Um, so if you have, you know, 12,000 items in a single folder, including your trash, by the way, uh, it, it can cause problems um, at login because of the way we fetch inventory. Um, so what happens is that at, at, um, right after you log in, your viewer starts loading up inventory and it 
it loads inventory one folder at a time. So if you had too many folders, I mean, if you had every item in its own folder in some insanely deep hierarchy, um, you would get a whole bunch of teeny tiny requests that didn't accomplish very much. Um, conversely, if you have, uh, you know, 20,000 items in a single folder, uh, then that one fetch would take a ridiculously long time. In fact, it can be so long that it causes timeouts and uh, it's, it's problematic. So you want, you know, somewhere between dozens and thousands of things in a folder, but not big numbers of thousands. Yeah, I mean, you, you, the degenerate case of you know the classic case in 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 trees, right, where you have every every tree has one item and one subfolder, and then in that folder you have one item and one subfolder. That would be that would be pretty bad. But uh, uh, who is the official inventory guru? I don't think we have anybody who I would be willing to name as an official inventory guru. That would be that would be an unpleasant tag to hang on anybody. So I, I don't think I'll I don't think I'll do that. Like most things, uh, your inventory is happiest sort of in the middle. Yeah, exactly. A nice balanced tree with you know a nice moderate number of uh, items in each folder. Um, uh, I'll take a look at the. I, I've seen some of those spam messages, although my spam filter is better at at removing them than some. Uh, I'll take a look at it, Cinder, see if I can block that. Um, I'm sure that the inventory UI could be better. Uh, and we're interested in making it better, but that's a that's a scary thing to bite off, um, but it's uh, it's something we're interested in doing, and we may get to, you know, like sometime this year. But it's not on the real short-term list. We want to do some fixes that make it more robust first, and then we'll think about making the UI better. Um, a good way to do that would be to submit a feature request, Jira. G. Um, and if you've got, if you've got, you know, diagrams and workflow descriptions, that would be super helpful. Uh, I think that I think it's a very good question. <laughs> trying, trying to read this um, this this comment from. X blog, uh, that's that's quite a quite a blob of text. Um, uh, it's an interesting challenge how to how to improve the level of education. We actually had a 
we, we do these internal educational meetings um, inside the company called Linden U, Linden University. Uh, we just had one on on um, content problems. It was it was really fun and interesting and had a lot of amusing stories. Um, many of the bad examples, in fairness, were from Linden produced content from the early days. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, uh, how is the Firestorm release going? I mean, is, have you run into any particular problems? I haven't seen any problems from our operations side. Uh, you haven't blown anything up that I can, that I've heard about yeah. yet. We were discussing that in our uh, meeting before this, and uh, we're surprised that it's gone fairly well. Um, the people who are upset about uh, the LOD are screaming about the LOD, um, and the ones that are screaming about the uh, inventory jump are upset about the inventory jump, but not the LOD. <laughs> uh, it, it, pretty good, actually, us. Yeah. <laughs> All things considered. <laughs> yeah. Uh well, you made you made a couple of pretty bold changes. That's you know that's uh, it's good if it hasn't completely well, blown up in your face. That's nice. Well, so far it hasn't. Um, it needed to be done, and quite frankly, uh, the end result is a better user experience, right? And that's what our team is all about. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, some of the things that people cite about um, why they do LODs the way they do, in particular the fact that some of the strategies for doing your LODs um, can make a big difference in the in the upload cost and the and the land impact. Um, we're going to be looking at making changes to that uh, to the way those things are calculated. Um, to try to remove some of the the um, unproductive incentives that that they create. Um, so obviously, fooling with land impact is has a whole bunch of potential pitfalls that I'm sure I don't need to explain to you guys. Um, and we will do our best to avoid those pitfalls. Uh, but uh, it is something that we're going to try to tackle one way or another. Um, so we may fiddle with the formulas, and then we'll have an interesting transition problem to get from one formula to another. Um, but uh, I don't think it's a I, I think it's a solvable problem, even though it's an obnoxious one. So we will. Yeah, I think I hope that it will. Um, uh, yes, it will affect existing content, but we'll do it in a way that will give people the opportunity to to uh, do a smooth transition of some kind. Strategy is not fixed by any means yet. So um, more on that later this year, I hope. It's not on the it's it's not on the the Q one list. Uh, Put it at the top of the Q two list please. <laughs> so we'll certainly have begun the, the process by then, whether or not we'll, I mean, one of the things that we will probably do, uh, I mean, it's sort of in the, the rough outline of the plan, is that we'll, we'll come up with a new formula for how land impact should be calculated, and we'll put it in the simulator, but not have it, we'll basically calculate land impact twice. And um, then all we'll do with the second one is log what its effects would have been if that was the real effect so that we can look at, you know, if we make the change like this, how big of a problem are we going to create? Um, and once we get one that isn't too wildly disruptive, uh, then we can look at actually making that the real formula. And even then, we'll probably have some period of time during which it, instead of 
returning things, it will continue to use the old formula, but start letting you know that the new formula will apply soon and you have something to correct. Uh, we're also going to try to get better tools for understanding why the land impact is what it is, um, so that you can so that you can deal with it better. Um, so some of the things you guys have been experimenting with in Firestorm and and, and other other viewers uh, are are likely things we're going to try to learn from. So I'm going to be interested in how your experience goes with those things. Yeah, I mean, it, one of the one of the possibilities is we change how the numbers are calculated, and they all go up some, and we just raise how much you're allowed to have, so that that doesn't, so that that's not a problem, right? Yeah, one of the things I've been I've been uh, working on is uh, trying to get more documentation from. Uh, the builds that we do out available where people can see them so, so that it's it's uh, and, and that includes both uh, you know how to build um, how to build the objects and also uh, the, some scripting examples basically make some of our internal scripting um, available and open so we'll, we'll, we'll try to do that get some better things for people to copy I can imagine the bong if they forced that. Yeah. Other other topics? Oh, wow. Getting off early. Well, thank us, Ryder, um, and thank Linden Lab for uh, everything you're doing. Uh, well, we're, ha we're having fun. Uh, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be a very cool year. We're going to do a lot of neat stuff. You'll be surprised. Awesome. Um, Great. <laughs> all right. I'm off. See you, everybody. Thanks yep. for coming. And in three weeks, not two. Okay, okay.